Greetings, welcome to Learner Burn Studios. In this video, we're gonna continue the conversation on how to fix your cracked shells after a typical burnout. In the first video, we utilized the slurry in combination with fiberglass and coarse stucco, and the slurry being the same slurry that you originally dipped your shells in. In this video, we're gonna utilize refractory mortars and cements as a way to fix our ceramic shell. The next patching material I want to talk about is the Green Patch 421. This is a, a heat set refractory or sp more specifically a mortar. Okay, so my tool of choice when I'm applying my different uh, mortars and uh, different refractories is actually simply a spoon that I've just smashed flat. Gives me a nice, you know, nice surface. It's a nice kind of sculpting tool. It's actually a nice sculpting tool for a variety of applications, but I found it particularly helpful for, um, for patching the, the ceramic shell. So like I said, for the, since the green patch is a heat set refractory, I'm going to do just that. I mean, it will air dry, um, but it sets up um, just a little bit better on, under heat. Now, a lot of people that will use this material, the one thing they'll do is that they'll apply it to a cold shell and then they'll take a torch to it to try to you know to try to to try to set it. The problem with that approach is that it will you'll seal the the outside surface of the green patch but you'll be trapping all the moisture inside of it. And then if you go into your kiln too quickly for your preheat your your patches will actually pop off the shell. Okay so what I want to do is I'm going to use the propane torch to actually heat the surface. Depending on the size of your crack, if you can do it all in one swipe, that's cool. Um, but if need be, heat just one area. And so in this situation, I'll do half, half the crack. So what I like to do is apply it straight on the crack so I know I have good adhesion. almost kind of working it into that surface, and then I want to feather it out. And almost creating a little bit of a ridge right up over the crack. I found that to be the most structural. Now the reason why I heated up the, the ceramic shell first is that it, now that heat is, is pushing radiating out through the patch and driving the moisture off. So now what we want to do is move in and do this last little crack on the front of the face. Don't need this to get real hot. It's just definitely, you know, too hot to touch. And so I'm just feathering out the edges, making sure I have a nice tight seal. Up here where I first applied the green patch, you can see where it's already kind of pushing out and kind of curing. The surface is already stiffening up just from the ambient heat from the ceramic shell. Okay, so now when it comes to patching up the micro vents that I drilled, what I like to do is, you know, come in with the torch again and I'll cook it a little bit hotter, almost to the point where I actually see just a little bit of glowing orange around the hole, around the edge of the hole. And you can see it didn't really take too long to get to that point. And I'm gonna come in with just a nice, you know, kind of nice little dollop here. I'm going to push in so it pushes into the hole a little bit, but I don't want to push it so far in that I'm that's going to make contact where the metal is. But I'm trying to create just a nice plug. 
And I'm going to leave it about a quarter inch thick right where the hole is, but then I'm going to feather it out. Eighth inch, three sixteenth inch thickness is your kind of ideal thickness. Maybe, you know, like I said, maybe a little closer to a quarter inch, just right around the, the patch, the, you know, the crack, or in this case, the hole for the micro vent. But I don't never want my layers to be any thicker than a quarter of an inch, just because that'll, any thicker than that, then they won't cure right. If I do feel like I'm, you know, I have a, a more extensive break and I'm really trying to work something together and I want a, str a stronger patch, I'll apply this in layers. And so I'll do an initial application at, you know, 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch thick or, you know, uh, what, five millimeters. And then I'll do, you know, let that cure and then I'll do an additional patch on top of that if I need to. Okay, so we've talked about our slurry and fiberglass fix. We've talked about the green patch. The third technique I want to show you is using a refractory cement. In this case, the fire cement. It's, it's referred to as a cement um, as opposed to the green patch being a mortar. And I think you know, really where it comes down to is this is a meteor material. Um, it has a lot more uh, grog and sand, but it also has a tendency of kind of holding on to its moisture a little bit more. So as we look at it, you know, it actually is fairly plastic. You know, as I'm moving it around in the, in the bin, almost kind of, like I said, it has almost a very kind of plastic nature to it. It has, not only is it, it, has, it has its refractories, it has, um, my understanding is a certain amount of kind of resins and plastics and uh, fiberglass in it. So it is a, can be a tenacious material. Now the trick with this though, is you can apply it similarly with the, as the green patch with, as far as heating the shell initially. Uh, you do want to refrain from, for the same reason, uh, from trying to set your patch with a torch because you can seal off the, the outer surface, but it's going to want to uh, trap moisture into it that could potentially later, later on pop your patch from your ceramic shell as you, you know, get into the preheat. Even with this material, we're going to go ahead and preheat the surface of the, just a little bit. And using my same trusty tool with the flattened spoon. Now this material is a little stickier than the green patch. The green patch has a, has a tendency of actually kind of going on a little bit smoother. This stuff you have to fight with it a little bit. I guess technically you could you could apply this with your fingers, if, you know, if you with a gloved hand. But it's still kind of same thing. You want to feather it off to the sides. Make sure you have a good adhesion. Smooth off the surface. Now this stuff also sets up a little bit faster because of the heat. So you don't want to dally around. It's kind of going in. Yeah, adding the extra heat to the surface, like I said, it does, it does speed it up a bit, which can be good and bad. So, you know, with this material, you might actually be well off just applying it to a cold shell and let it, then letting it air dry for an hour or so, a couple hours maybe, before actually applying any heat or putting it into an oven to set the, set the patch. As you guys are using these materials, you know, I'm just showing you how I use them. But I'd be curious to see how and hear about how you 
all handled, all these different materials, how you patch your shells. So if you could leave me comments down below on how you like to use these materials. Or even better, if you have materials, products, techniques that, you know, I, that I haven't covered, I'd be certainly curious on how you guys put things together. And so again, not the prettiest of things, but it's, it gets the job done. And the one things you want to do is when you're done with any of your patching material, whether it's the cements, different mortars, whatever, it's really handy to actually go in and smooth out the surface. Don't just leave a big hole. Go ahead and smooth it back out. Scrape off any excess off the sides. Just because that way, any, any material that's left exposed is going to cure inside the con container, stiffen up, and ultimately become unusable. And so instead of wasting material, just go ahead and smooth your, your container out. But make sure you go ahead and then seal your the products. Okay, so that was you know pretty straightforward. We have our slurry and fiberglass, we have our green patch, we have our fire cement. You know, all these products are more than adequate for fixing your shells, whether they broke during or cracked during burnout or <laughs> fell off the table and broke. Um, weirder things have happened. But for the most part, I've never had a I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever had a shell break so badly that I wasn't able to get it back together and get some metal out of it. So it's just a matter of you know whether you you know whether you how much time you have. If you're you know one of the reasons that you know I like using the green patch is that I can burn out patch and be back in and ready to pour metal um, in a matter, you know half hour hour you know time sequencing pretty quickly. Whereas the fire cement and the slurry are going to take a little bit longer to apply. And you need to, you know, either do them earlier in the day and pouring later in the afternoon, or even better yet, uh, take care of your your burnout and your patching the night before, and pour the next day. Uh, we are gearing up to, you know, start you know pouring metal. Although before I can actually start pouring metal, uh, the next two one two videos is going to be actually me making my new furnace. So look forward to you know jumping into that. And I'm real anxious. It's been a, a, quite a few months since I've had a chance to really pour some metal. I have a bunch of projects all backed up. Everything's ready to go. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if so, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already, if you're digging my content. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And until then, and as always, be creative and be safe.